Hello there, and uh, welcome to another lesson where I'll be doing a brief overview on propellers and, well, subsequently, the difference between a fixed and a variable propeller. So to start off with, a propeller is essentially just a rotating wing. Just quickly draw a wing here, where it turns the turning moment of the engine into two forces, which are known as, well, lift, or with reference to the prop thrust. Just draw that up there. And of course, drag or torque. Now it's keen to realize that this is going to be a different torque than engine torque. They're actually going to be opposing forces. Now, the blade of the prop should always be orientated in the best lift to drag ratio. And this is done with reference by a term called pitch. The pitch of the propeller is measured from the lateral plane, with, or in this case, the rotational surface, or the roto rotational plane, sorry, and the angle of incidence, which is just a straight line from the leading edge to the trailing edge. So that is known as the pitch of the propeller. So there's going to be two things. Uh, well, let, let's just first label that, and I'll just label that as theta. So there are going to be two things that are going to vary the actual pitch of the propeller in order to maintain the given uh, a given angle of attack to maintain the best lift to drag ratio. I'll just redraw this and maybe I'll just use a different uh, perspective. So let's uh, let's have a down going blade. So and uh, you can imagine that this would be uh, a cross section of from the the side of the aircraft on the right hand wing. So let's just redraw our rotational plane and our angle of incidence. Oops, that's a little jagged, but it should do. Our angle of incidence. So for a given uh, angle of incidence, we're, it's going to be very reliant on, well, one of two things. Uh, first and foremost, the forward airspeed of the aircraft. So uh, this component right here will be the, uh, the airflow actually going uh, towards the, the blade of the prop. And this will actually be causing a, a resultant uh, relative airflow. And as, uh, as we remember, the angle of attack is measured from the, the angle of incidence to the uh, relative airflow, or in this case, it'll be the, our resultant airflow. This, so this angle here will be our angle of attack. So for this to actually be orientated towards the best lift to drag ratio, we should have an angle of attack that allows for that. But as you can see, as we start increasing this component here, it's going to actually decrease our angle of attack and eventually uh, make it so we're leaving our best lift to drag ratio. So the way that we actually get around that is actually by, well, simply changing the, the pitch of the blade. So I'll try to draw this at a slightly higher pitch a higher pitch or a more coarse pitch and redraw our lateral plane so you can see uh, I'll try to uh, draw this as close to what we had before if we start increasing the forward airspeed of the well of the aircraft we're gonna have to have a higher angle of incidence that would be again from the the cord of the uh, of the wing to this uh, rotational plane in order to maintain a given angle of attack and and just for the purposes of this we'll say that these angles of attack are, are equal and vice versa if we actually have a smaller uh, a smaller angle a uh, smaller forward movement we're going to need a, a finer pitch or a lower pitch in order to compensate that. And I, I won't redraw that. I, I imagine that you can just uh, contemplate that. We'll say that uh, this is going to be the, the more fine pitch, and this is going to be the more coarse pitch. So there's two circumstances that uh, a fine pitch will generally be used, and that's going to be in a low airspeed uh, maneuver, such as takeoff and climbs, whereas a, a coarse pitch is going to be used mainly for, for cruise flight. So there's one problem that we actually have, and I'll, I'll scroll back up to our original drawing. I'll actually just, uh, I'll just erase this and I'll bring back a different drawing that I did a little earlier, just because it's a little hard to draw. And 
And uh, as we can see, so we've already figured out that at a uh, particular forward speed, I'll draw this uh, this wing. Oh, that is awkward. There we go. So at a given air speed, redraw the wing, the rotational plane, and we'll just have some forward speed, whatever it may be. If we start changing the overall movement of the prop, so the, the speed of the prop essentially, this component right here, this, this rotational plane, this is also going to affect it because you can imagine if we had the two different circumstances of, of having a blade with very close to the same pitch but a, a shorter rotational arm and the same forward movement of the aircraft we can see that it's going to actually result in a very very low angle of attack so the way that this is actually uh, uh, done is, well, in this case, we would actually go for a more coarse pitch, again, and this would be considered a more fine pitch. So if we actually look at our diagram, this is, uh, well, essentially just a prop viewed from the front of the aircraft. We can see that the distance for the outer tip of the blade is going to be much greater than the uh, the inner or the, the hub of the blade. So for the same movement, we're actually going to have a much, much longer um, rotational plane, this, this component right here, for the tip of the blade as opposed to the, the hub of the blade. So the way that manufacturers actually compensate for this is they'll actually change the actual angle, like the pitch of the blade, uh, from the hub to the tip. So from the hub, we're going to have a, a much more coarse pitch in order to compensate for that. And as it starts to move closer to the tip, we're going to have a much more fine. So this is going to be a much more fine around here and a much more coarse. Let's say an A, there we go. So now this actually brings us right into, well, uh, uh, well, what is the uh, the difference between a, a fixed and a variable pitch propeller? Well, essentially what a, a fixed per, uh, pitch propeller is, is it's going to actually... I'll, I'll actually scroll back up to, to this drawing. I don't think I'll need another diagram for this. Um, a fixed per pitch propeller is, is set by the manufacturer, and they're going to be uh, choosing a, a pitch of the blade in order to ensure uh, the best performance for a given portion of flight. And it's generally averaged out, but some might be optimized for... Uh, a climb, so it would be climbs would be a slower, uh, slower forward speed. This fine, uh, more fine pitch, or optimized for a cruise flight, and that would actually be a more coarse pitch. Now, vice versa, we actually have uh, what's known as variable pitch propellers, and I'll be getting into uh, each of them in a little more detail. But a, a variable uh, pitch propeller can either be set on the ground or set in the air by the pilot uh, by means of the RPM or even just the uh, the throttle movement. Um, and that's actually going to be uh, able to be set by them in order to optimize it for that given portion of flight. So you'll be able to actually alter the, the pitch of the propeller depending on whether you're actually doing a climb portion or a cruise portion. But I'll, I'll be getting into that in a little more detail. But uh, for now, that's, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and uh, thank you for watching.